Good evening from the Bournemouth International Centre. Every seat sold, the best part of 2,000 people assembled here for the final session of the Midland Bank World Indoor Pairs Championship. Hello, our last programme from Bournemouth and I can promise you bowling of the very highest class as pairs from England and from Australia decide this final. Well, the Australians have had the better of it so far, no doubt about that. Jim Yates and Ian Shubak led 3-1 against Andy Thompson and Gary Smith at the end of the first session, and so the Australians started tonight just two sets away from becoming the first players outside the UK to win an indoor bowls title. Well, the Australians were quite brilliant this afternoon in a match played in wonderful spirit, and the England pair desperately needing a good start to this second session here tonight. Well, in the fifth set, they're 5-2 up, Gary Smith bowling there, and just two ends of the set remain. David McGill and Jimmy Davidson, the commentators. There you go, Gary. That's a fair lead, though. Come on, Gary. Better start. <laughs> Looking better. Could be. It is. And after that brilliant draw on the previous end from Andy Thompson, surely must fancy himself to draw this one. Shoe back little glance at the scoreboard then. And the bad news is that Australia three down with two to play. <laughs> May promote his own short bowl. Over promotion, I think. <laughs> Wasn't what I really played, but I won't refuse it. England lead favours the Andy Thompson bowl, but a little touch of the jack from Andy Thompson will probably seal the set. To have any realistic chance of winning this set. Shoe back, he's got to get the shot here. 
three in it, two to play. If England score, Australia would need a full house to tie on the last end. <laughs> Excellent standard of bowling for this final stage of a world championship. Got chances. If he hits his own wood, he'll squeeze out the England bowl. He's got it. Away she goes. Two, I should think. Shocking the second nearest Australian bow. <laughs> and having chucked that bow, you can remove the definite shot for Australia. So it's one measuring for two. Removing the bill, not concerned in the measure. Turning out the Aussie bowl. They score two. They trail four five. One end left to play in set number five. the decisive end of the fifth set played from a long mat to a short jack. And this man, Jim Yates, has contributed a great deal to Australian success in this championship, led extremely well. They've soon learned to say the yellow, haven't they? I suppose, uh, as an Australian colour, they like calling it the yellow. Yellow and green. Come! Come! He knew it was good, he beat it to the head. Couple of feet on it. Forcing lead. Running at the jack. Well, my old skip would have finished that instruction by saying, don't lose your bow.
and Ian Chewback will want to lose the jack round the corner take it away from the Thompson site Thompson's mind is that if England win the end they've won the set and you do it very decisively if his lead had buried the jack in the ditch Australia need a single to force an extra end they need two to win it and they hold those two Just about, is he reaching? <laughs> One skip bowl left for each pair to complete the set. Really, the last realistic hope of saving the head gone for Andy Thompson. That last ball is covering the line to the two shot balls that he would have been looking for. of the bowls not in England's favour their own two red bowls planted in the wrong direction there may just however be uh, enough of the nearest red ball showing for Andy to use it turn it towards the jack they can't put it into the ditch of course because he has no position behind trying to kill it Take it, hit the target bowl, but removed it without disturbing the jack. Three shots to Australia. They win set number five by seven shots to five and take a lead of four sets to one in this nine set final. Ian Shoeback, what a day he's having. I don't know about you, it reminds me a bit of uh, Barry Sheen. And uh, Barry, of course, became a world champion. And so will Ian Shoeback, if he and his partner can win this next set. They're ahead in it by four to two. They're on the fourth end, Gary Smith and Andy Thompson, with much to do now. Yeah, Jimmy. Yeah, I like that. Very much. 
Certainly one to England, maybe two. Two foot on your last, mate. You like it this hand? I might. No, two feet on your last. Two foot six from it. You just come under yours or around it or turn it over, mate. Preferring to keep to backhand. Is it the extra weight? <laughs> Definitely second now. This one looks good weight. Very good indeed. England striking back. Well, there will certainly be a temptation to Ian Schubeck to reach this head. Almost got several things, but England still two shots. S several possibilities on that shot, and uh, he was close to getting more than one of them. He certainly opened it up for himself now. If England don't win this set, Australia have won the championship. It's still <coughs> if these two go on the card, the set's level. Andy Thompson would want to make it three. shot uh, filled with risk for Thompson but he felt that to leave it so open for Schubeck was dangerous and he certainly reduced the target area for Ian Schubeck still playable but it will require very good controlled weight Schubach was looking at the line of those bowls as if there was a plant on. Red onto blue, onto two reds.
3 to England. They take a very welcome 5-4 lead after four ends of set number six. Cheers for the scoreboard operator looking for a five. Don't get the wrong side of the law, the scoreboard operator is a police sergeant. Five four it is, <laughs> and three ends left to play in set number six. Oh dear, oh dear. At this crucial stage, can't afford many of those. <coughs> He's jogged a few miles this week, Jim Yates. The banker from the state of Victoria. Shot on length. <laughs> Three ends left, a single shot in it. Crucial for England. They've got to win every set remaining four in a row <coughs> trying to promote Did a double shuffle. Still one to England. Still plenty of drawing room. Forehand now open, but a real reason for Andy Thompson to change. He put that bowl there on the backhand. Oh, 
Are you fancy? Fancy the forehand? Very distinctive delivery action, Andy Thompson runs off the mat. Turned in the Aussie bow, but not far enough from an Australian point of view. Schubach looking at the possibilities of removing that shot bow. Plenty of drawing room on the forehand now. Plenty of room, that is, in terms of a path to the jack. It's to finish within a foot of the jack to get the shot. It's the head in Schubach, now looking at from the mat. Looks as if he's using weight, going for the bowl. Hello, Stewie. Yeah. Got it, killed the head. It could have been a couple if the jack hadn't moved. Cross. Thought he'd got the half bowl to leave the jack alone. So, end number five to be replayed in the same direction. They gave a skip, a poor start lead, Gary Smith on the original plane of this end. And he drew him out of trouble. Trying the back end in this direction. Good start, Gary. Well done. Well done. Good decision. <laughs> this man, Jim Yates, stuck to the same side of the ring throughout the final. Forehand this way, backhand back. And he knows the line, doesn't it just? Back toucher. Rocked back and forth. <laughs> Ian Schubert walked gingerly backwards from the head. Doesn't want to make the red bowl fall. Playing positively at it. He's got it. Good God. I think he was within about a sixteenth of an inch of the target bow. If I hit the blue, it hits the red, knocks out the shot blue. He's enjoyed himself this way. What a bowler. Thank <laughs> you. 
trying to force the plant. Will he hold the line? The English pair four one down, but all except the fourth set were close set close sets. Well contested. Red Bull looking lonely. Still possible for Thompson to get the shot he was playing, David? Yes, but should he remove the line of three balls, there's another blue one there to uh, steal the first shot. And if he were to be wide in the forehand and cut that blue ball into the head, he could remove his own red one. And go three down. Fraught with danger. <coughs> Close to the target bowl. He's got the target bowl, just rocked it. Wonder what he said then. single shot in it if Australia get one it's level two to play but if Ian Schubach can thread a passage between those two short blue balls to the red one <laughs> he could open up a three shot lead <laughs> electing not to play the last goal at the end takes the single five across set number six Two ends to play. <laughs> Ian Schubach desperately needing good lead bowls from Jim, but even more desperately needing good lead bowls Andy Thompson. Gary Smith was absolutely brilliant in the semi-final. Hasn't touched that form so far in this final. Just a couple of feet short of the 27-yard marker. Must be very close to the minimum 25 yards distance and uh, doesn't Jimmy like that distance look at this again touch you if the bowling jack had driven into the ditch that bit of chalk's important okay got it Two foot six to that bowl. That's the one you're trying to beat. Foot or so on your last. Jim given his skip, shot bow. Now asked for a good position bow, just behind. It's a bit close to the head. Could open it. Committee meeting, England. You have a puppet at my son, he says. There he goes. We 
you like. Got it. Yes! And Jim Yates, a regret, opening up that target. Toucher in the ditch, first shot. The other red bow on the green, second shot. Ian Shoeback, needing to draw within two foot six of the ditch to get the shot. Got to pass a six foot reach far enough it could be yes holding shot measurement the strings got to travel over the edge of the bank from the blue bow that makes a difference <coughs> Andy trying to draw closer to the ditch than that bow not succeeding not succeeding six bowls played No indication yet from the official on the green. Irrespective of whether or not he's lying first shot, Ian Shubak will be very keen to get another ball in the head. The blue one were to be removed, <coughs> he would lose three. So he has to beat the two that are on the green. Similar line to his first one. Will he stop on? That is the shot without any doubt. Well, David McGill indicated that uh, he had to get one in the head. Could Andy be thinking about driving one blue bowl onto the other one? scores level he's having a go at the two rows he's got one not the other single to Australia one end left in the set they lead by one shot and that was that brilliant draw to the ditch by this man Ian Schubeck
is a professional in every sense. Throughout the final, the distance from Matt to 27 yards being questioned. And uh, because it's clearly 25 yards. Well, I bet a lot of money that this is well over 25 yards. Clearly more than 25 yards. I wonder whether that was a tactical challenge of the length of the jack. Last end. If Australia win it, the championship, and a check for £14,000 is theirs. Good start. Good start, Jim. Good try. Had a foot, mate, foot and a half. Good line. Great weight. Super stuff. Andy asking for weight. Once this opened up, <coughs> Who's got it? could kill the end with this. <laughs> Unlucky. Just a whisker on the front bow. <laughs> Australian discussion on tactics for skip spells. Quick agreement. Second bowl in case the shot bowl is moved without the jack being disturbed. Going to a receiving position if the jack moves and in a scoring position.
Good lineup of Bo Jack Bo. <coughs> Not driving weight. Trying to get the jack through. Or disturb the bowl, stay in its place. He's got it, got it. Has he got the shot? Probably. Ted Brooks confirms. First class pressure shot. Remember, England need a single to force an extra end. Need two to win the set. Schubeck to play first, then Thompson. <laughs> the way this man's bowled throughout the championship, you'd certainly expect him to draw this shot. The crucial thing will be where precisely it finishes. Good line. Good weight. Good shot. Good shot indeed, but will it be good enough? Andy Thompson with balls behind. Second shot. Ball or jack. And this could be the last bowl of the championship if he misses. Playing it with controlled weight. Will it bend? <laughs> Schubert Duster goes in the air. The Aussies are the champions. They collect the Midland Bank World First Championship, a check for £14,000. The thoroughly deserving winners of the final by five sets to one. Firstly, the runners up, the check for £8,000. A very worthy finalist, ladies and gentlemen, Gary Smith and Andy Thompson. So, the beaten finalists, Gary Smith and Andy Thompson, how well they've played here this week. They beat the holders all top and blind, but the Australians just too good today. A check for £14,000, the new Midland Bank World Pairs World Champions. Ladies and gentlemen, our first overseas champions, Ian Schubach and Jim Yates. Mr. Michael Fuller, the Deputy Chief Executive of the Midland Bank, hands the trophy to these very popular Australians. They came and they conquered at the first attempt. And the crowd here in Bournemouth loved every second of their performances this week. And congratulations, Jim and Ian. Did you actually know that you are the first players outside the United Kingdom to win an indoor bowls event? Well, no, David. Uh, well, somebody told us that fact uh, earlier today, I think just before we arrived. But, uh, you know, uh, that the case, uh, we're just thrilled to have won. And uh, it doesn't matter who's won in, in the past, as far as we're concerned, we're just thrilled to have won at this time. The crowd were great tonight, weren't they? Oh, fantastic. They were marvellous supporters and uh, appreciated both sides of the... Of, uh, the teams and uh, uh, that's all you can ask for and you, you kind of react well to the crowd here don't you well i said to jimmy before we arrived i said look well most of all we've got to enjoy ourselves win lose or draw and uh, you know i think the crowd enjoyed that and we certainly enjoyed the crowd and i think it rubs off on the players too we were pretty relaxed and uh, you know if it wasn't for the crowd getting behind especially ten thousand miles away it was uh, without them you know i don't think we could have played the bowls that we did so all uh, credit, I think, goes, or a lot of the credit goes to all the supporters and the friends we've made while we've been here. 
You were actually giving out gifts to the crowd before the start, weren't you? <laughs> the little pen badges with kangaroos on. That wasn't to get them on your side, was it? <laughs> well, I don't right. know. Yeah, you're <laughs> no, just some uh, memento kangaroos, and I think uh, the crowd loved them, you know. They're just a token souvenir, and uh, I hope you've got one too, have you, Dave? Oh, I've got one. Oh, don't, don't miss me. Have out. you? Got be kangaroos. <laughs> J Jim, you, you've played, well, increasingly well, really. I know you, you're both not used to this indoor carpet. You've got increasingly uh, better through the tournament, and today I would have thought that was the best you've both ever played together, really. Oh, well, it's certainly the best we've ever played together because <laughs> we've played together near four times. Uh, <laughs> and uh, we certainly... Uh, played very well together, combined well together, and uh, uh, the little uh, differences we might have had last night were all overcome, and we, we had a marvellous day today. Best of really. friends now, eh? Oh, no, we, always, we, always <laughs> we always were, and we always will be, but, you know, as I said, win, lose, or draw, we were going to go home friends anyway, and uh, I think we're yeah. special friends now. Well, this is your first visit here. We're going to see a lot more of you, I hope. Thank you. Well, uh, you know, it's a pleasure to be here. We're, as I say, the friendship's been great, the hospitality, and uh, everyone's looked after us, and we'll never knock back an invitation to the UK again. <laughs> we look forward to seeing you. You've, you. you've been a credit to the tournament, a credit to the game. Thanks very much indeed. Thank, Thank you, you David. David. Thank you. So, that's the end of our week in Bournemouth. Hope you've enjoyed it. It's a great game, this, you know. Still played in what they used to call the true sporting spirit. Uh, keenly contested, yes, but in a nice atmosphere. And our next in Mill Bowls is the biggest tournament of them all, the World Indoor Singles Championship. That's in March. But uh, for now, from the Bowls team, I wish you a good night and a Merry Christmas. And I tell you what, this pair's going to enjoy their Christmas, no doubt about that. Bye-bye. <laughs>